saving Buster. Go get it, boy, Mrs. Parker yelled as she tossed Buster's favorite ball across the yard. Donovan Lowe was pulling weeds in the Parker's front yard. He watched Buster streak by and smiled. Donovan liked Mrs. Parker. A year ago, she'd had a stroke. That's when she moved in with her daughter, Liz, Donovan's neighbor. The stroke left Mrs. Parker weak enough to need a wheelchair, but it didn't affect her funny bone. Everyone loved her jokes and stories. She was like the whole neighborhood's grandmother. Buster was her service dog, and he was like the whole neighborhood's pet. He raced back with the ball. Okay, Mrs. Parker laughed, but this is the last time I'm exhausted. Mrs. Parker threw the ball again. It bounced and rolled into the street. At that exact moment, a truck swung around the corner. There was no way the driver could stop in time. Buster! Both Donovan and Mrs. Parker shouted. Donovan sped to the curb where Buster lay. The truck driver was kneeling beside the dog. Get a blanket and call the vet, he yelled to Donovan. Tell them it's an emergency and we're on our way. That night, Donovan and his mom brought her tortilla casserole over to the Parkers. Liz reported what the vet had told them. Dr. Sims thinks that Buster will need to go to the animal hospital in the city for an operation. She'll call tomorrow when she knows more. The next morning, Donovan waited nervously for news about Buster. Around 10 o'clock, Liz called. Donovan stayed near until his mom hung up. Buster has two broken legs, his mom said. The doctor will operate today. You and I will help out with Mrs. Parker while Liz is at the animal hospital. Donovan and Mrs. Parker looked at old photo albums while they waited for Liz. They shared funny stories about Buster. Donovan's mom did what she always did in times of stress. She cooked. Liz returned late that evening. Buster would have casts on his legs for a while, but he'd be all right. Mrs. Parker and Donovan played a game as his mother heated some food for Liz. Then Donovan went into the kitchen to get a glass of water. Mom and Liz were washing dishes and didn't hear him come in. We don't have $2,000 to pay for Buster's care, Liz exclaimed. I don't know how we'll ever pay it. Donovan slipped back into the living room. He had $17 he had saved for a new computer game. He'd give it to Liz. But Liz needed $2,000. What else could he do? That night, Donovan told his mom what he had overheard. I want to help, but I don't know how. Mom said softly, it's a big problem, honey. Sleep on it. Maybe in the morning we'll have an idea. No brilliant idea came to Donovan during the night, nor did one come during school the next day. When he got home, his mom was testing a new recipe. Taste this, please, she said as she held a spoonful of stew under his nose. Donovan cleaned the spoon and declared, delicious! You should have a cooking show. Thank you. I made enough for Liz and Mrs. Parker too. Would you carry it over for me, Mom asked. Liz was on the phone as she answered the door. She pointed Donovan to the kitchen. Just put it anywhere, she whispered as she turned back to her phone conversation. Donovan stared at the counters. It seemed as if all their neighbors had sent food. Donovan squeezed his bowl in between two dishes. Then he stopped to see how Mrs. Parker was holding up. I'm fine, but it's hard on Liz. She has to do everything that Buster used to do for me. And worry about how she's going to pay the vet bill, Donovan thought. What did your mom send over, Mrs. Parker asked. Stew, said Donovan, but I think you have a wide menu to choose from tonight. I haven't seen that many dishes since the school's potluck supper. Mrs. Parker whispered, I know, but your mom's the best cook around. Donovan smiled, he thought so too. As he walked home, that brilliant idea he'd been waiting for started brewing in his head. As his thoughts sped up, so did his feet. Donovan burst into the kitchen and announced, I know how to pay for Buster's operation. We'll have a potluck cooking contest. People can pay to enter. They'll make a sample of food for the judges to taste and a large pot for people to eat. Then people can pay to eat the food. The more his mother and Donovan talked, the more excited they became. People could buy tickets for $2 each. Each ticket would pay for a helping from a pot they wanted to taste. Ideas flowed quickly after that. They'd have cooking contests for adults and for kids. Someone could sell pictures of people and their pets. Others could demonstrate what surface dogs do. They could even have a funniest looking pet contest. They would call it the Pet Potluck Fair. Mrs. Lowe checked with Liz, Mrs. Parker, and some neighbors. Everyone loved their idea. 
The day of the potluck contest came. Friends and neighbors filled the park. Buster was the guest of honor. He sat in a special wagon next to Mrs. Parker. Donovan helped sell food tickets. Liz took pictures of people with their pets. Mrs. Parker and Buster judged the pet contest. A bulldog was chosen the funniest looking pet. It wasn't a surprise when Donovan's mom won the cooking contest, but the best moment came at the end of the day. Carl Baker was a banker who lived on Donovan Street. He made a special announcement. Buster has shown us how important a service dog can be. Because we care, we've raised more than $1,000 toward Buster's vet bill. The crowd hollered and clapped. Donovan hollered and clapped too, but he knew that it wasn't enough. Liz was about to thank the crowd when Mr. Baca held up a hand. When Donovan Lowe talked to me about raising money for Buster, I made a vow. I told myself that my bank would do all it could to help raise this money. I talked to other businesses in our neighborhood too, and we will make up the difference. We will donate the rest of the money needed to pay Buster's vet bill. The crowd hollered and clapped even more. Liz laughed and cried at the same time. So did Mrs. Lowe and Mrs. Parker. Buster looked up at Donovan. Donovan could have sworn Buster was smiling. And that was all the thanks Donovan needed.